Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math, and today we are going to be talking about geometric constructions. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about the circumcircle about a triangle. Another phrase for the circumcircle is a circle that is circumscribed about a triangle, where the vertices of the triangle are on the edge of the circle. I'm going to show you some essential skills using a compass and a straight edge. Then we will move to the computer and discuss how to do this in GeoGebra. The process we use to construct a circumcircle around a triangle is first we got to make the triangle. Then we have to find the perpendicular bisector to each of the sides. That's the main skill needed to make this circumcircle is to find the perpendicular bisector. So let me show you how to find a perpendicular bisector via construction using pencil and paper first. Notice I'm using a protractor for my straight edge. I'm not going to be using any of the angle measurements on here. I'm just going to be using the straight part of this. Notice it is not a ruler. It has no markings on it. It's just simply a straight edge. So first I'm going to draw a line that I want to perpendicular bisect. I went over it a few times just so that way it's dark and neat for the camera. Notice on your compass one of the ends is pointy. The other one is like a pencil. I'm going to need to open my compass up so it is at least over half of the length of this line. The amount to which I open my compass needs to be a consistent value because I need to make sure that it stays that value a few different times. The solution to this is to use a straight edge and to just to draw a line over to the side. This line needs to be at least over half the length of the line that you want to perpendicularly bisect. So take your compass and open your compass to the length of the line drawn to the side. Take the point to end, put it on the end point of your line. Oftentimes when I draw constructions, I just draw a little mark like that wherever I need it. But you can also just draw a full arc from top to bottom. When we go to the computer, the computer will actually draw a full circle instead of an arc. Before I do the other side, I'm going to go to my line just to make sure that my compass is still open to the right angle. Then I'm going to repeat this process. I'm going to draw an arc from top to bottom. So let's think about what we've drawn so far. I'm just going to draw a little dotted line just for reference. This is not a part of the construction. This is just to help you see something. The line from the intersection of those two arcs to this endpoint and the line from the intersection of those two arcs to this endpoint should be the same value. Why are they the same distance? Let's call this distance A. This distance is A and this distance is A and that's the same for all of these. So what we just formed is an isosceles triangle right there. And so if, if I have the isosceles triangle right here where this is the same distance and this is the same distance, that means that this is precisely in the middle. And furthermore, the height of that isosceles triangle is also perpendicular to this. Now, if I didn't have this bottom half and I said just draw an isosceles triangle and then draw its altitude, its height, I wouldn't necessarily know where exactly to draw that. I could eyeball to what I think is perpendicular, but I'm probably going to miss so that's why we did this bottom half. So that way, whenever we draw a line, we're going to draw it from this point to this point. And this point has the same stuff going on. This distance from here to here and the distance from here to here are both A. So we have that other isosceles triangle. So now all I need to do is to take my straight edge and connect and connect these two points. Now, whenever drawing, now whenever using a straight edge to draw from a point to a point, I'll often place my pencil down and then move the straight edge up to it and do the same thing on this side. Move a pencil down, move the straight edge up to it. Just That's because our pencils have a bit of thickness to it and you want to make sure that whenever you draw the line that it actually goes through there. So as you can see, the line that I just drew is perpendicular to the, my original line and it actually bisects it. That means that the length on this side and the length on this side is the same measurement. Now let's go to the computer and let's do this for a triangle and we'll find the circumcircle around a triangle. Okay, so at a computer or mobile device, 
open up GeoGebra. You can access GeoGebra online at geogebra.org. You can download it. I'm running the desktop software here. You can also access the online app on a desktop or a tablet. It does work on a phone, but it is a little bit small. When given the option, select Algebra. The only reason why I selected Algebra instead of Geometry is, is I like to have the Algebra side menu because I have some options I can turn things on and off and sort of kind of view all of my objects that I've created a little bit easier. Select the Graphics Toggle menu and let's turn off the axes because I don't really want to see them. Let's start by making our triangle. There are polygon tools, but I'm just going to make this polygon using line segments. So hit the drop down and select Segment. You can click and drag or click to add the point and then click to add the other point. It doesn't really matter. I prefer just to click and then click again. So there's one segment, there's the other segment, and then take your third segment to close off your triangle. Anytime you finish your tool, always click on the arrow tool so that way you can actually interact with the app. You can make any triangle that you want. Try to pick a triangle that is not specifically right or isosceles or equilateral, just so you can see how this is going to work for any triangle. So we need to do what we just did on paper and perpendicularly bisect each side. So to do that, I need to use a compass and the compass tool requires a measurement for your compass angle. So I'm going to create another segment and just going to draw it over here. So here I have line segment. Notice it called it I. I'm going to actually rename that, so I'm going to come over to the side, right click on it, and pick rename. Then let's rename this to be compass angle. You can't put a space into it, so just compass angle and hit OK. So that way now I know that this is compass angle. As I get moving along here, I'm going to be recoloring some of these items so that way everything's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to start out by coloring this triangle to be blue and thicken up the lines a little bit. The dots are already blue, so I'm going to make the line blue and I'm going to thicken it up to about the halfway point and do that for all three. And I'm going to color compass angle to be green. Notice the items on the side also change color as you change the objects on the right. Okay, go to the circle option here, select the arrow and pick compass. To work the compass, you have to open your compass tool up, just like we did on paper. So I'm going to use this over here on the side. So I'm going to click once and then click again. And so now I have a circle. It, anytime you use a compass tool on GeoGebra, it's going to draw a full circle. So I'm going to put the compass on point A. And then I'm going to do the same thing, D, E, and apply it on point C. So here are the arcs that we drew a second ago. We just have the full circles attached. If for some reason your compass angle isn't big enough, you can always just drag point E or D out and it will change. If my compass angle was this small, I couldn't find the perpendicular bisector. So it needs to be big enough so that way there is some overlapping. Okay, now we need to draw our line from this intersection to this intersection. So select the segment tool. I'm going to hover over the intersection. Notice I have, it's a circle C and circle D. If I move my arrow a little bit to the right, it just says C, or a little bit to the left, it just says D. So that means if I was to click right now, I would only be putting a point on circle D. Here, it's saying the point is going to be the intersection between those two. So I'm going to just click, so that way I have a point. Then the reason why I don't click and drag is so that way this note pops up again, so that way I see that I am putting a point on C and D. And then click. You can always test this out by moving one of your endpoints around, and you should see that that line segment is, in fact, attached to both of those circles. I'm going to make the circles be a dotted line just because they're there as a guide, but I don't really need to see them. And then I'm going to make this perpendicular bisector red. All right, so I need to repeat the process for one of the other sides. So I'm going to grab my compass put it on point B, make it dotted. Now I need to do the same thing. I need to draw a line segment from this intersection to this intersection. So click and click. And there we have it. Let's go ahead and color it red. So at this point, I actually 
could go ahead and draw the circumcircle because I know that the center of the circle should be at this point where those, where those two intersect. But just to show you that that will be the center, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the last side of the triangle. And since GeoGebra Bird draws a full circle, it actually doesn't require too much extra work. Just got to draw the line segment one more time. Notice as you move the endpoints around that all three perpendicular bisectors are crossing at the same location. That point is actually the center of our circle. We can call that point specifically the circumcenter. So let's use that point and draw our circle. Since this is our center and the points A, B, and C are going to be on the circle, that means that there's going to be a radius from this intersection to A, to B, and to C. So I'm just going to go back to my circle tool. I'm going to just pick the regular circle tool. Any of these top three would work. I'm just going to pick up the regular circle tool. Make sure that I have all three highlighted here. Click to add my center. Extend this. Notice I could extend this to C, to B, or A. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same. So there you have it. There's our circumcircle. That was a little bit of work. One thing that GeoGebra has is actually a faster way to do this. Let me show that to you. GeoGebra has this option, circle through three points. So all you need to do is just to click the three points, and there you have it. So it did what we did via construction a whole lot faster. But the benefit of doing this with construction is that you can actually see what's going on here. So the lesson constructing the circumcircle is over, but let's actually investigate this triangle and the circumcircle a little bit more since we have it constructed. To do this, I'm going to turn off all these constructions. L is the center of our circle. I actually going to want that to be orange. And then let's draw some, some line segments. Notice these three orange lines have to be equal to each other because they're clearly radii. They're from the center going to the edge, so all those are the same. And let's thicken up this outside circle a bit. So let's move around. Let's move this triangle around a little bit. If you're ever moving one of the endpoints around and the circumcircle disappears, that's because these constructed circles aren't big enough and the perpendicular bisectors disappeared. So to fix that, just make the compass angle a little bit bigger. And that will take care of that problem. So I want you to see a few things. Whenever the center of the circle is inside the triangle, it's going to be an acute triangle. Notice we have three isosceles triangles within this blue triangle. If ever the circumcenter is outside the triangle, that means that this triangle is obtuse. And lastly, whenever the circumcenter is on one of the sides, that means that, that the resulting triangle is actually going to be a right triangle. Let's take the measurement of angle B. Pick the angle tool and select A, then B, then C. And you see that this is about 90. It's going to be a little off just because this point is not necessarily going to be exactly on there. Let's move point B around. So I'm going to move a little bit to the left. Let me stop. Notice even here, that's about 90. That point is on the line. Move it over here. That's about 90. That's about 90. So as you can see, whenever the circumcenter is on one of the sides, that means that the resulting triangle is going to be a right triangle. That's because we have two radii adding together to be that diameter. Because we can change these endpoints at will within the software, this sort of kind of in and of itself is a geometric proof that this would work for any triangle. Notice if I was to try to do an equilateral triangle and prove something off of that or off of a right triangle only, you might ask yourself, well, would it work for all of them? But since we're able to move this around and move through all varieties of triangles, then this sort of kind of shows you that this is actually a thing that's going to work for all triangles. There are more formal algebraic proofs of this, but this is a nice visual proof. As a challenge, I want you to use the GeoGebra software to play around with a quadrilateral. Can you circumscribe all quadrilaterals or only some? If some, which ones can be circumscribed? Have fun!